Imagine you are on a free-flying dragon mission around Earth for like five days and something goes wrong. There is currently no means or plan for astronaut rescue for purely commercial missions. The United States government isn't even formally talking about this, creating a plan, understanding what will happen if there are stranded commercial or private astronauts in space. How do we get them back home safely? This issue was brought up today during the FAA's ComStack meeting where it was discussed that really the burden falls on the operators right now, SpaceX and other spaceflight providers. And there is no current action within the US government to even formally discuss it, let alone plan for the inevitable need for astronaut rescue. Commercial astronaut rescue, I mean. We've been talking about astronaut rescue, you know, government astronaut rescue for decades. I'm gonna go over that history and how it does and does not apply to the new era of commercial human spaceflight. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. I help take a look at these little policy areas that are not well developed or being overlooked to see where we can make progress as we move forward with the commercial space industry. During the open discussion today at the end of the FAA Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee, that's ComStack, Dr. George Neal, he was the former FAA AST head. AST is the Office of Space Transportation. So the branch of the Federal Aviation Administration in the United States that handles commercial space transportation. So he has experience not only with the government side of commercial space flight, he himself is a commercial astronaut, having flown on Blue Origin's New Shepard, a suborbital vehicle, back in 2022. Today, he brought up the fact that there is no authorization from Congress, from the U.S. Congress, to even look at this issue, let alone plan for it, let alone come up with an idea as to how we might do commercial astronaut rescue in the future. Another area that I think is potentially important, but it's not in anybody's current set of responsibilities, not NASA's, not DOD's, not DOT or FAA, and that is the idea of space rescue. Who's thinking about that? Who's working on it? How would that happen if there had been a, a huge issue with Polaris Dawn? You know, that, okay, well, let me get my Rolodex or, you know, just, well, that's SpaceX's problem. All right. How can we think about how that could work over time? And I do want to clarify, this is not talking about the Boeing Starliner issue. That has been resolved. There were numerous ways to resolve that. So on the International Space Station, we have Soyuz, which could bring astronauts back down to Earth in an emergency. We had Dragon, where there was a Dragon on board the ISS in an emergency situation, or the way that NASA decided to proceed was using the Crew-9 Dragon that will be launching very soon to bring the astronauts back down to Earth. Or NASA and Boeing decided that in an emergency, Emergency, they could have actually used that Boeing Starliner to return the astronauts back to Earth. Now, Starliner is no longer there, so that's no longer an option. But they had multiple means of providing rescue to the astronauts in the emergency situation on the International Space Station. So that is not what we're talking about here. We are talking about purely commercial missions. In this case, free-flying Dragon missions, because SpaceX is the only company that is able to do purely commercial orbital missions. We could bring up suborbital here, but suborbital is such a quick trip that I don't think rescue is feasible in any sense of the word. If something were to go wrong with a suborbital flight, either Virgin Galactic or Blue Origin, I don't believe there would be time to do a rescue. But in any case, there is no plan for suborbital astronaut rescue either. So what we're really talking about here are missions like Inspiration4, Polaris Dawn, the Polaris Program 2 and 3 missions, FRAM2, and any future commercial Starship missions, as well as any other company that can provide commercial transportation on their own in the future. Um, think Sierra Space Dream Chaser, or in some reality, if Boeing Starliner becomes a commercially viable option in the future. This is not a new topic by any means, but it's a new era of commercial space transportation, and the rescue agreements in place have always been vague. For example, the 1967 Outer Space Treaty does talk about astronaut rescue. The agreement on the rescue of astronauts, the return of astronauts, and the return of objects launched into outer space, or just called the rescue agreement, that was signed around the same time, 1967-1968, and that elaborates on what's already in the Outer Space Treaty in Article 5. 
These terms are admittedly vague. What is an astronaut? There is no legal definition of astronaut, not in the United States law, not in an international treaty. So what is an astronaut? Is a government astronaut only considered an astronaut? Is the crew of a spaceflight provider, the, the SpaceX employees of Polaris Dawn, for example, are they personnel of a spacecraft? Like what is a personnel of a spacecraft? What about people along for the ride? What about, you know, Jared Isaacman, he was the commander, but he wasn't employed by SpaceX. Is he an astronaut? Is he a personnel of, of the Dragon? What are the obligations of the rescue agreement? Thinking ahead to commercial space stations where we will have government astronauts, we will have researchers, and we will have just space tourists. As we've seen with the International Space Station, it's a mix. So are space tourists, are they astronauts, are they personnel of the spacecraft to be rendered assistance under these agreements? Not only that, who pays for this? Who's, who's the responsibility? Is the state liable to pay for it? Is the state doing the rescuing paying for it? Is it the responsibility of the provider to pay them back? So um, is it the responsibility of SpaceX to pay back the US government or any government that renders assistance? You know, I'm just using SpaceX as an example. It could be anybody. Um, what about the individuals? Is it their responsibility as an individual or their government's responsibility? All of this stuff is completely untested and vague. Getting into more modern agreements, the Artemis Accords is a multilateral agreement between so far 43 signatories, and they do discuss astronaut rescue a little bit in here. Providing emergency assistance to those in need is a cornerstone of any responsible civil space program. Therefore, the Artemis Accords reaffirm NASA's and partner nations' commitments to the agreement on the rescue of astronauts, the return of astronauts, and the return of objects launched into outer space. Additionally, under the Accords, NASA and partner nations commit to taking all responsible steps possible to render assistance to astronauts in distress. So it reaffirmed the rescue agreement in the Outer Space Treaty, but it did not really clarify who is an astronaut and who is responsible for rescuing that stranded astronaut or astronauts. This whole concept here, it's not new. We, we, we've been talking about 1967, 1968. None of this is new. We have countless examples in science fiction of astronauts in distress and rescues and you know so many wild examples of science fiction scenarios of how astronaut stranding and astronaut rescue might go. But we do not have a solid plan. What we do have is the United States government committing the Space Force and State National Guards to doing astronaut rescue for re-entry purposes or launch abort situations. In 2020, as SpaceX was getting ready to launch the Demo-2 mission to the International Space Station, that was the first example of a commercial company launching astronauts into orbit. The US Space Command and various National Guards were on alert. They were practicing scenarios where they might rescue the astronauts in case of distress in the waters specifically. Major General John Shaw, commander of the Combined Force Space Component of the U.S. Space Command at Vandenberg, I guess it was Air Force Base back then, now Space Force Base, California, he was quoted back in 2020 about the need for this kind of government rescue scenario. I think it's very likely that the Department of Defense will be some part of that broader team in the support of human spaceflight program. And specifically, he was talking about commercial crew program and other space tourist operations. So I love that the U.S. government is already practicing how it might rescue astronauts who splash down in the ocean, for example. But what about the astronauts that are stranded in orbit? This takes me back to the space shuttle program. I was an undergraduate student at Florida Tech when Space Shuttle Columbia had its final flight and the crew did not survive. And I remember countless discussions about the possibility of rescuing the space shuttle crews that go up after Columbia. Um, what happens if there is foam hitting a future space shuttle that it is deemed unsafe to return those astronauts back through the atmosphere? How would you go ahead and rescue those stranded astronauts on the space shuttle back in the day? And I know that there were contingency plans that were being put in place about a second space shuttle that could be launched rapidly that could go rescue the astronauts that were stranded in orbit. And these are government astronauts. I don't know how far those contingency plans went. I don't know if there ever was a space shuttle that was immediately ready to fly during any future space shuttle mission. So even the U.S. government back in the day was thinking about the fact that it might need to rescue astronauts in space, but it was thinking about it in terms of government astronauts and the space shuttle. Now the space shuttle is long retired and the U.S. government is reliant right now on SpaceX.
and that's it because it cannot rely on Boeing Starliner at the moment. And even Orion is going through its own heat shield problem. That leaves us only with Dragon. Bringing us back to today's conversation at Comstack. Whose job is it to think about? Maybe nobody because it's sort of in the cracks. In the, in well, it's the operators. And in this particular case, SpaceX. SpaceX is the only operator that's capable of doing these missions at this time. And SpaceX is the only operator capable of doing astronaut rescue at this time. And we do not know if SpaceX has plans behind the scenes for any kind of astronaut rescue for any future Polaris program mission for the FRAM-2 mission or for any future commercial mission that it might do outside of the International Space Station. We also don't know, can SpaceX afford to do an astronaut rescue if it is needed to be done? So even though there's not a lot of attention being drawn to this issue and no solid plans or even capabilities to rescue astronauts, commercial astronauts in space outside of the International Space Station, there is some discussion that's starting to brew. In July of this year, the Aerospace Corporation and RAND held the very first workshop, U.S. Space Rescue Workshop. And I'm unable to find if there was actually kind of some kind of white paper or some kind of result from that workshop. So let me know if anyone's watching from RAND or the Aerospace Corporation. But it they are at least discussing it. And hopefully the right people in government are listening because we can talk about it all we want. You know, we can have workshops. We can, I can make videos like this. We can write articles. We can talk about it all we want. But until we start implementing solutions or at least starting to plan for implementing solutions, then we are going to be stuck if we ever get into this scenario in the future. In my opinion, it comes down to Congress because Congress is the one who has the ability to create laws, to create some kind of law that says how astronaut rescue would take place in the United States and also the funding to allocate towards planning for astronaut rescue and then planning for an actual rescue itself if the need should arise. 